I will show you the step by step from the setup. Step 1. Locate the start and end point on the ground to be measured like this or like this. Say from point A to B on the ground. Step 2. Set up a tripod stand at the starting point on ground like this. Next step, open the legs of the tripod stand with equal spacing like this. The starting point must be directly under the tripod. Next, raise the tripod to your chest or to your chin level like this. Always consider your height and the height of others that you're working with. This will avoid you tiptoeing or bending too far from the eyepiece lens. Next, ensure that the tripod legs are firmly locked. Next, make sure that the three legs of the tripod are firmly pushed into the ground like this. This will help to maintain stability for the device. This is important because you don't want to see this accident happen or the equipment falling down like this or get damaged due to lack of attention. Next, make sure that the top of the tripod is relatively level like this. Next step, bring out the auto level from the box. Next, place the auto level on the tripod using the screw under the tripod like this. Next, adjust the three leveling foot screws on the auto level to be at the middle of each thread like this. This helps for the easy centralization of the spirit leveling bubble letter. Next, ensure that each foot screw leg from the auto level match with the chamfer edges of the tripod like this. Next, now that the auto level is stable on the tripod. Next, use each leg of the tripod to gradually adjust the spirit level bubble on the auto level. The spirit level bubble on the auto level should be close to the center, like this, like this, like this. Keep adjusting each leg of the tripod gradually. While observing the leg that the spirit level bubble is running to, use that leg that the spirit level bubble is running to to bring the spirit level bubble closer to the center. Next, use one foot screw from the auto level to gradually move the spirit level bubble to the center like this. At times, only the tripod leg adjustment can complete the spirit level bubble centralization task. Alternatively, use any two foot screws on the auto level 
simultaneously either in the clockwise or anti-clockwise direction to move the spirit level bubble closer to the center like this then use the third screw to gradually centralize the bubble like this now that the spirit level bubble is at the center we are now ready to start taking measurements but avoid touching the tripod again when taking readings this could cause the centralized spirit bubble to move off again from the center and you don't want this to happen but if this happens then you have to adjust the spirit bubble again any measurement or reading that you take without the centralized spirit level bubble is assumed to be wrong next without touching the tripod turn only the auto level head towards the staff or rod like this turning only the auto level head to any side will not affect the spirit bubble at the center as long as you do not touch the tripod or shake it next the second person on the job will move to the end of the distance that we are about to measure with the measuring staff or rod communicate with the person at the other end of the staff using a phone the office radio or use hand signals this will avoid you from shouting also we help the other person to keep the measuring staff or rod stable with less shaking of the staff like this some staff or rod will have their own spirit level bubble to help like this next use the target gun or sighting pointer to locate the distance measuring staff or e staff or measuring rod remember there are different staff or measuring rod used in surveying to locate the staff you are not using the eyepiece but the target gun using a little triangle at the top like this snipers use this too turn the auto level device gradually using the slow motion adjustment knob while you are still observing the target gun triangle until the target gun or sighting pointer triangle falls on the staff this enables you to locate the staff first if you don't locate the staff first then you can't take a reading the person holding the staff must remain still and avoid shaking the staff or rod next look into the eyepiece lens of the auto level like this to be able to see the staff readings and to clearly see the numbers on the e-staff held by the second person in a distance use the big knob focus ring to adjust for sharpness the big knob adjustment will enable you to see the numbers and readings on the staff clearly keep adjusting and turning the big knob until the blow numbers on the staff becomes sharp clear and eligible next to see the crosshair clearly
use the small knob ring on the outer eyepiece of the lens to adjust for the crosshair like this. The crosshair is inside the auto level instrument. Now you should be able to see the crosshair clearly. Now you should be able to see the staff readings clearly and you should be able to see the crosshair clearly too. This is the top hair. This is the middle crosshair and this is the bottom hair. Another name for the top hair is the upper stadia hair. Another name for the bottom hair is lower stadia hair. To calculate linear distance on the ground, we need only the top hair and the bottom hair. The middle cross hair can be used for control points and leveling. Remember, we have used the central middle hair in one of the videos to learn how to calculate height of collimation and rise and fall methods. Also check out on how to calculate for closed traverse surveying. I have left a link in the description and in the comment section for you to assess the videos. Next, look through the lens and let's take the reading for the top hair and for the bottom hair. Next, we are going to take our reading to three decimal places. And here we are using the E level staff. 1.7 starts at the bottom of this E and 1.8 starts at the bottom of the next E. This is the beginning, which is 1.800. This next point is 1.810. This next point is 1.820. This is 1.830. This is 1.840. This is 1.850. This is 1.860. This is 1.870. This is 1.880. And this is 1.890. The next will start as 1.900, which is the next E, which is 1.9 to three decimal places is 1.900, which is in meters. Now that you understand the reading, let's read this top cross here. This is 1.800 and this is 1.810. This top cross here is not up to 1.81. If you observe this line, someone can read this as 1.808 and another can read it as 1.809. You can see why the tolerance of plus or minus 0.05 is allowed to take care of the little difference in this reading. For the crosshair, we are going to accept 1.809 meters. This bottom hair is not up to 1.700. This is 1.650. This is 1.660. This is 1.670. This is 1.680. This is 1.690. But this is not up to the middle between this and this. It is below 1.695 and above 1.690. Someone can accept this as 1.692 or 1.693. I'm going to accept 1.692 as the value for our bottom hair. And for the middle cross hair, we don't need it for distance measurement. However, 
if you observe the reading this is 1.750 and is a bit at the top of the e someone can read this as 1.750 or 1.751 1.750 will be more accurate now you have the top hair value and the bottom hair value next we're going to calculate for the distance between the tripod stand and the staff on ground the formula is top hair minus bottom hair any value you get you multiply it by 100 that will give you the distance on ground that is here we are going to have 1.809 minus 1.692 and any value we get will multiply it by 100 if you subtract this the difference is 0 0.117 we're going to multiply this value by 100 and we're going to have 11.70 meters this is the value of the distance between the position of the tripod stand and the position of the measuring staff on ground you have achieved this instead of using a measuring tape from the tripod to the level staff the calculated value is 11.70 meters calculated from the starting point to the end point on ground to verify this let's use a measuring tape we're going to start the measurement directly under the tripod on ground and end where the staff was initially positioned if we do this correctly we should have the same result with a negligible error difference of plus or minus 0 0.05 if the calculated distance value from the auto level and the measure distance value with the tape is too wide then there could be errors error could come from the auto level not calibrated for a long time or error due to parallax misreading of the staff or overstretching of the measuring tape or sagging of the tape or an old worn out tape or other error problems if none of those errors are present then you should have an approximate result in addition you can also use the steps and setup shown in this video for leveling tasks setup but with different procedure this for another video if you find this video helpful click the like button and subscribe for more videos like this i will see you in the next video session